Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at how to fix charging problems with USB-C. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so you've got your USB-C device. Now in this particular instance, I'm going to be using a Nokia 8 and also some clone headphones, which happen to use the USB-C power charging interface. And I've noticed recently my Nokia 8 is getting worse and worse when it comes to trying to recharge it. It certainly seems slower to charge. And last night I actually found that I woke up this morning after putting it on charge when I went to bed that the phone was down to 3% battery this morning. I then tried to put the cable back in a couple of times and nothing at all, just wouldn't register a charge. So I thought it's probably about time that I clean the port to make sure that the connections are all making the right contact. So here is my arsenal of equipment to clean these connections. So some of these items you may already have around the house, some of them you may not. Um, some of them are actually quite useful to have around the house. So if you wanna pick up some of these items, I will put links in the show notes below so you can check them out for yourself at Amazon or Gearbest or wherever that may be. But these are the items that I generally tend to try and use to clean up components, ports, all those kinds of things. So the first one, which I like using them probably the most, is actually the air duster. Now this is from ebuyer.com in the UK and you can pick these up pretty cheaply. And basically it's just compressed air in a can. And this is really useful for electrical components because you don't really want to be sort of poking and prodding at them if you can possibly help it. So a, a blast of air generally can do the trick. Now another item I quite often use is screen cleaner. Now this particular screen cleaner is a very high alcohol content screen cleaner and it seems to do very well on screens and also for other components that I've tried it on before very good at dissolving grime, dirt, that kind of stuff. Next thing in the arsenal is an old toothbrush. Now an old toothbrush may sound like a, a daft thing to want to use, but actually because the bristles are very small and very fine, you can actually get in there and sort of agitate some of the dirt away from the contacts. Highly recommended, and pretty much everybody's probably got an old toothbrush or even just use, just use your mum's toothbrush or something, she'll never know. Now another thing which most people will probably have in the kitchen somewhere or other, is a wooden cocktail stick, or whatever you want to call them in your local country. Uh, we call them cocktail sticks because we generally put things like a bit of pineapple and a bit of cheese on them and leave a load of them out for people to eat. Anyway, I'm going off topic. But these are fantastic. Obviously, because it's wood, it isn't conductive in any way, shape or form. So if need be, you can prod around in those contacts and not worry about shorting anything out. Now, another item is actually something else you probably may have lying around is a cable tie or a zip tie. Now the smaller zip ties actually are really good because they're quite fine and essentially on the end is just a sharp piece of plastic. Anyone who's actually probably used one of these and scratched along it when it's been connected, you've probably got a little cut on your arm or your fingers or wherever because they can be quite sharp. But that sharpness is actually really good for getting rid of the dirt and debris right inside the connector. Now the last one is one I don't generally recommend but it is actually really useful but it does come with its consequences if used incorrectly. Now this is a SIM tool, which is uh, the sort of thing you get from most mobile phones when you buy them to release the SIM tray. This is really solid because obviously it's metal. It's quite fine, quite thin, so it can get into most places, but because it's metal, it is conductive. So do be very careful if you use one of these. So let's start from the beginning now. The first thing I'm gonna do is gonna use the compressed air. And all you need to do is just gently blow across the top of it not actually inside it, because there is propellant inside these, which can get inside and damage stuff. So try not to use it sort of wedged right inside, but just around the top. Whilst you're doing it, don't shake the can either, because that will also get propellant out. So we're giving a little blow just to make sure there's nothing like larger bits of fluff or debris, kind of like the stuff that you find in your belly button. You don't want that in your phone. So the next thing we'll do is we're gonna use, I think I'll use the toothbrush because that's actually a pretty good one. So with the toothbrush, try and align the bristles inside the port and just give it a sort of agitated motion as you would when you're brushing your teeth. Now if you can, try and use a flicking motion so that way you will flick out any of the debris rather than pushing it further inside the device. Give the device a little gentle tap 
and see if anything starts coming out. So after you've done that, that probably in most cases will be enough, but for me, I'm gonna carry on anyway. So next we're gonna go with the wooden toothpick and just give it a gentle flicking motion on the side of the connector. So if there's anything embedded on the side, you can just flick it out. Now, if you look at the, um, the end and it's starting to get a little bit frayed or there's little bits of wood splintering off, just use another one. You don't want to get another piece of wood stuck in there. Now, I've broken that a little bit, but there is actually quite a big bit of fluff which has just come out on that. That could well have been our problem. Yeah, that one's getting a bit too bad now, so we'll stop using that. I'll give the plastic cable tie a little bit of a go as well. And probably at the end, it's probably a great idea just to actually give it another blast with the air duster. Just to make sure there isn't anything left inside there. Now what you can do, if there is some bits in there which you really can't get out after looking and you kind of look inside, you can actually physically see that there's something in there. You can use the screen cleaner. I would suggest probably using a little bit of the screen cleaner on the end of the, uh, the toothpick, the wooden toothpick, so it'll absorb into there. So it's not gonna be wet and runny, but it'll be just damp enough to kind of break down the, uh, the grime. So just a little spray on the end. Let it soak in a bit or just wipe off the excess. And then you can use that in there and then again that will break down some of the dirt and the grime and we'll give it another little agitation just to be thorough so now moment of truth let's plug this in and see if it will actually start charging so moment of truth And there we go, it's worked. You probably can't see it very well on the camera, but it does actually say on there that it's charging. And I've got my screen brightness turned down, so I was trying to save the battery. So let's crank that up so you can actually see it. And there we go, hopefully you can just about make that out. And it says that it's charging. So, happy days, that is a result. So now we've got a fully working, fully chargeable phone and should last for a little while. Obviously, when you're putting USB devices in, normally when you put the plug in, you should hear a, a, a definite click or feel a kind of resistance than a click when you insert it. So if you plug it, plug it in and you don't feel that resistance or that tiny little click, then it could be because your phone cover is slightly blocking it or because there's dirt in there which is preventing it going all the way to stop it doing that click. You should find when you plug the cable in that the plastic surround actually goes snugly up to the device. If you can see there's a big gap or if you look at it and the gap is slightly off on one side rather than the other, then that'll be the side that you've got more dirt in. So give it a visual inspection and actually see how far your connector is actually going inside the device. So looking at our piece of paper, now it's always worth putting a piece of A4 paper or something underneath your work, just so you can see what's coming out. So we've got a few bits on there. It's not a massive amount, but certainly some of those bits of fluff could be stopping the charging. So anyway, that has been how to resolve the charging problems with USB-C. Obviously it'll work for pretty much any type of connector, so feel free to give it a go on any other connectors. If you've got a specific piece of advice that you use for cleaning your ports or keeping them clean, let us all know in the comment section. We'd be really glad to hear it. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.